we had a lot of people very um, interested in our birth story. So this is, uh, today is Thursday, Thursday February 7th, one and week. I'm officially one week postpartum. So this is Eli's birth story. Because it starts with the polar vortex. Yeah. The day before he was born, Chicago had record-breaking, um, like a record-breaking cold front. And it was literally like, what was it, like 50 below zero wind chill. We're zombies right now. We haven't slept in a week. So anyway, uh, so the day before we spent the entire day watching Indiana Jones and sitting around the house in our pajamas. Which was the first time I had ever watched Crystal Skull for the record. And I give it one thumbs up. Anyway, the pregnancy had been like completely textbook. Everything was perfect the way it should be. He was progressing. Everything was like great. You're on track to deliver, you know, right around 40 weeks. <laughs> Here's how it happened. So Colleen has, uh, we have, I have one of these exercise balls and we had read uh, that sitting on one of the exercise balls is good for uh, it doesn't in, hips, it doesn't your... induce labor. They say after 36 weeks you can sit on this ball and it just kind of yeah it it helps your back. I've been having your hips you know... up yeah and all, it helps your back pain. So so I blew Great. up this ball for Colleen. She sat on the ball for maybe 12. Two minutes. No, it was like 15 seconds. It about was... 15 seconds. So I'm sitting on this ball and this is about 11 15 11 30 a.m. Yeah. And all of a sudden I heard this and like a gush of fluid and I was and I stopped just and I said oh my gosh my water broke anybody that's pregnant knows like if you sneeze sometimes you pee your pants if you you know cough too hard sometimes you pee your pants so I literally I was like well maybe I just like peed my pants so I called my doctor and the doctor was like give it 30 minutes if there's more water your water broke go to the hospital so 30 minutes went by Nothing. I was we fine. We watched another. What were we? We watched an entire James Bond movie. James Bond was on. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Skyfall. Skyfall was on, and and I'm just like noticing that I'm feeling like a little like uncomfortable, but it, but it wasn't like a big deal to me. <laughs> Still the whole time, I'm a little crampy. Just like it's all, it's all she said the entire time. You know, I just I'm a little I'm a little crampy. That's all she would say for about. Because it didn't really hurt. I didn't think anything of it. Oh. I was like, why don't we just go down to the hospital? Meanwhile, it started to snow. So it's starting it's still, to snow it's still, and ice a little bit. It had been 49 degrees below the day before with the wind chill, and it was still 10 below and like 25 degrees below zero when this was all happening. So, so there was three inches of just fresh ice, ice blowing snow. snow on the roads so not like, good for any like as bad as i've ever like, seen the roads around here nine months pregnant really didn't want to get out of the house but i was like okay like we should so it was like hop in the shower take your time and then i was like i'll just put throw some of our things in our hospital bags just in case this is it you know we'll have them there so then we left the house probably around five five forty five five forty five Six, -ish. six, yeah, between like five forty-five and six, yeah. around there. Traffic was awful. So we get in the car. Snow. By the time we get in the car, it was bad. I'm starting to feel very uncomfortable. She was still fine when we got in the car. She was like, "Just take your time, drive slow. Like we're not in a yeah, hurry." Yeah, I was like, "We don't need bad. to get into an accident." <laughs> She's like, "But I'm feeling a little crampy." And she was still the, the whole time. I'm just feeling a little crampy. It. We are about twenty minutes away from the hospital. Um. 15, 20 take, minutes yeah. from the hospital. But with this weather, probably like 25. It was more like 25 because everyone's going slow. To 30. Yeah. So cut to about 15 minutes into the car ride. 10 minutes into the car ride. I all of a sudden I'm like holding on to the little like Bo what's it called? The oblip handle. The the, I'm the, holding the on to the, the oblip handle, handle yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh! And I think at one point I said. said if this isn't labor, I don't know what is because it went from zero, like I was at like a one, two on the pain scale to like a seven, just like that. 
we pull into the hospital. Jesse <laughs> Jesse drops me off. I was like, I'm like, I'm like I was like, just drop me off and go park the car. I'll be fine. So I go and I park the yeah, I drop and I have her to off walk go park the car. halfway around the hospital, down these long halls, all over the place to get to the like labor and delivery center. I get to the labor and delivery center, like buzz in, and I'm like, hey, I think I'm in labor. The nurse buzzes me in, and at this point. I knew I was like I knew that this was it. We get up to the front desk and the lady's like, Hi, can I please get your insurance card and your, you know, date of birth? And I was just like <laughs> gave her the card and you could tell her face was kinda like, uh but then she takes me around to the triage room where Jess where I meet Jesse. Jesse comes in there and they uh the doctor said, Colleen, you're at a six or a seven. No, okay, let me revise here. <laughs> so so I I drop her off, I park the car, I come back down, she's gone. I'm like, where is my wife? So <laughs> I walk down to the labor place, uh, delivery wing, and so I go into the room. They've already checked her in, they've given her a gown, they're like, hey, you need to get undressed. So we start getting her undressed. At this point, she's in a lot of pain. Like, a lot of pain. So, so we're trying to get her dressed, she's in a lot of pain, we get her on a bed, and the nurse tries to check Colleen, and Colleen just Jump, just about jumped off the table and painted like level level ten paint. The nurse got a little freaked out, you know, and the doctor came. At that point, the doctor says, "Yeah, so you're like six or seven centimeters." We have been at the hospital for all two of minutes. two minutes. No, literally two three minutes. We're gonna take you to the like the delivery room. So I I I said, "Call you okay?" She said, "Yeah, I'm fine." She was just breathing heavy. She was like, "Obviously, I'm in labor and we need to get going." So I said, I'm gonna go call your mother. Very fast, I said to the doctor, I said, how much time do we have? And of course, they don't they don't know, but I said, you have like a, like a general frame. And she said, could be an hour, could be six. And I said, okay. Uh, so I said, I'm gonna go call my mother-in-law. I'll be right back. So we've been at the hospital. This is literally, this is about three minutes in, three, four minutes. I called her at 6.33 p.m. So we've been at the hospital since about 6.30. So we left the house, say we left the house at six. six. We got to the hospital about 6.25. So this is eight minutes later. Yeah. And so about eight minutes after I walked, I, I dropped Colleen off. I'm calling my mother-in-law. I said, hey, Colleen's in labor. This is all happening very fast. I'll call you as soon as I know something. And literally on the other line is the nurse. <laughs> and she said, are you Colleen's husband? I said, yeah. She said, are you still here? Did you leave the hospital? I said, no, no, I'm standing right outside. I was just calling my mother-in-law. She said, you need to come back right now. And I said, what's going on? She just said, come back right now. <laughs> so she said, run. So I started running and I walked, the, the doors just opened because they knew I was coming in and the doors just opened. I started running down the hall. And usually when you're running down a hall and somebody sees you running down the hall, they say, slow down, don't run down the hall. She did not do that. She said, yes, run. Yes, you should keep running. And so I started running faster and she said, that's good. Keep, yeah, that's good. Keep that up. Run, like get in here right now. Cut to while he's running, I am on the bed. The doctor said, you're at a 10. He's coming and all of a sudden I was like, ooh, I feel like I need to push. And she's like, yep. And then I hear the nurses go, where's the father? Where's the father? Did he leave? What's his phone number? Somebody get his phone number. So I'm lying on the bed and I start yelling out his phone okay. number. I'm like, 480. She calls me at 635. Okay, six. Is when the nurse calls 635 is when the nurse called me and said, you need to come back. And between her calling me, Eli was, born, Eli was at born at 644. 644. I think I pushed three times and he weighed three, five pounds, nine ounces. Five pounds, uh, he was three weeks and six days early. Three weeks and six days mm -hmm. early. It just was so unexpected. Like if it was- anybody watching this has ever gone skydiving, that's what it was like to me. My father-in-law asked me, he said, how do you feel? How does it feel to be a father? And I, yeah, and I said, it's like skydiving. But uh, it was such, an unreal kind of not normal experience you know it was it was it was just such an adrenaline rush and it really did feel like just being thrown out of an airplane it was just such a a mental like what the heck is going on i was yeah i did not wake up that morning thinking yeah this could be the day but like no he called me no i think her dad called me and was like, hey, what's going on? Like, I heard she's in labor. And I was like, yeah, you're a grandfather. <laughs> it's done. It's over. We feel very blessed and... Um, an understatement. Of yeah. All time. Uh, He's a beautiful little boy. My, I, I have, I have, I have 
I look at you in a, a different, wonderful light. This this woman was as brave as any human being I've ever seen in any circumstance. She just she did the whole thing with grace and humility and uh, and gusto, and and I just couldn't be more proud of her. Um, it's so, very sweet. Yeah. So that's the story, and then we'll just and we're sticking to it. We'll end with uh, a little, a little we'll showing show you maybe a little nut. nug. Yeah, he's a little peanut. One one thirty one twenty nineteen. So here's baby. Say hi to the world, buddy. Yeah. He looks like his dad. Oh, that's a big yawn. Oh, big yawn for the world. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. He's still going. From. From, uh, from all of us to you. Thank you Thanks so much for, for all your well wishes. Video. Yeah, we, uh, it's so nice to know that we have um, the support of our friends and all of our family. And, uh, we can't wait for everybody to meet them.